So, I just figure now is a good time to remind some folks about some stuff. Because oftentimes, when there's a chance for a mega corporation to grift, as though they are super good for social justice and awesome for human rights, they'll do that. With the whole uh, Ukraine situation, with, you know, anything alt-right in America, but not the Ukrainian Nazis, um, and, you know, with um, the latest development being Elon Musk's Twitter takeover, so many brands and and mega corporations in general are jumping on board, really hopping on pop to tell everyone how awesome they are because they're not supporting Twitter or Elon Musk. Bah, bah. I don't like Elon Musk, but I also don't like Twitter for reasons that I've gone over in the past. And y'all are free to check out my videos on um, the t previous Twitter like shareholders, the people who ran the joint before. Um, my videos about Twitter lying in order to ban me because my messages went against the narrative, so they falsely accused me of platform manipulation and spam, and then told a bunch of people that um, that that I was responsible for a long series of terrible things. Uh, in order to justify my being banned. Um, I have no love for Elon Musk either. I don't like uh, Elon's uh, big government support, his fucking simping for Ukraine either, his <laughs> massive advancements for the U.S. military-industrial complex and security state, and his slow invasion of our minds with Neuralink. Uh, I don't like him. I don't like him at all. Not one bitto. Um, but I figure this is a good time to bring up that Twitter um, being owned by him now is meaning that, like, the people behind it are threatening him, allegedly, uh, with removing Twitter uh, from the Apple App Store if he doesn't... Uh, tow the line, the previous line that, that that had been towed before. Now, before we get into any of this, this is brought to you by Brushfire2048, the sequel to a book written by a guy who has supported my content before. It's all about how life is going to be in the not-too-distant future, and it's a fiction book. Uh, if you've got a conspiracy theorist in your life you need a gift for for Christmas, feel free to hit him up in the description. Uh, there is a link. And a trailer for it, if you're interested. There's also Liberty Professionals, who has been a longtime supporter of this uh, content. And uh, he is a Texas-based private security professional who will help you secure your home, small business, and life. And uh, he's got plenty of tools to help you with all of that because he's been a private investigator in the business for many years, ACES board certified. But he has moved to Texas, so uh, there's that now. Um, he can help you with remote consultations and all of that if you go to the link in the description. Uh, and doing all of that and getting the free blockchain-based privacy forward search engine, uh, pre-search, and a free account uh, with them, letting you search a bunch of things privately, um, will also support everything I do. Everything I do is supported by these organizations and people, and I can't thank them enough. Um, and viewers like you with the Patreon and all that shit. But basically, this is what we're looking at right here. We're looking at uh, Elon saying that Apple is threatening to remove Twitter from the App Store. <laughs> and um, he says that Apple gave no reason for the potential ban and had stopped advertising on the platform. So they have stopped advertising, allegedly. And uh, Elon has said that they will uh, remove Twitter from their app store without giving a reason, and uh, that Apple has also threatened to withhold Twitter from its app store, but won't tell us why. Now, I, I figured, because I don't like Elon, you know, I've got plenty of content against Elon, 
I figured I would cover the other side of this for a bit because I hate Apple. Apple is, uh, you know, a longtime friend of the government and many world governments the world over. And I thought I would go over some of the apps that they still do allow on their app store because I think it's, it's useful to remember that Apple is a dystopian nightmare. Uh, but before I do that, uh, I'm going to bring up some recent developments where they have limited file sharing tools used for protests in China, where it's a 10 minute cap on receiving files in AirDrop. <laughs> that uh, you can't use the AirDrop uh, to help you with your protest in China uh, because it's the files will expire after 10 minutes. So, just to be super clear, this means that if you wanted to leave a file in a folder so that people could access it uh, and, and help, you know, not be as oppressed, uh, you couldn't do that. You have to actively monitor folders and you have to keep them on, like, at all times, regularly updating them because they're limited to 10 minutes. Apple made the change to AirDrop on iPhones sold in China. The shift came after protesters in the countries used the server service to spread posters opposing Xi Jinping and the Chinese government. The use of AirDrop to sidestep China's strict online censorship has been well documented over the past three years and was highlighted again recently. Apple didn't comment on why the change was introduced in China, but said that it did plan to roll out the new AirDrop setting globally in the coming year. The idea is to mitigate unwanted file sharing, the company said. But the Cupertino, California-based tech giant has been criticized in the past for making changes to iPhone features to appease the Chinese government. In one example, the iPhone maker took heat in 2019 for hiding the Taiwanese flag emoji for users in Hong Kong or Macau. It also removed apps for virtual private networks, which are commonly used to circumvent the country's internet firewall. Many of Apple's own services are also inaccessible in China, the world's biggest smartphone market, including Apple TV+, Plus, the iTunes Store, paid podcasts, Apple Books, and Apple Arcade. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a thing that's happening. And uh, while that's happening, you know, just little things like... Uh, Oh yeah, they make their phones there. They have their phones made under the oppressive condition of the Chinese government to begin with. That's why they appease the Chinese government. Because Apple is in league with the Chinese government so that they can keep on getting their cheap technology made in China. And because of that, the shipments of the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max might be delayed. They're due to the COVID-19 restrictions in China. The COVID-19 restrictions in China uh, <laughs> are in Zhengzhou, the primary iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max assembly facility location. The facility is currently operating at significantly reduced capacity. As we have done throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, we are prioritizing the health and safety of the workers in our supply chain, Apple said in a press release. The company didn't say whether certain regions are more or less affected, nor did it say how much longer customers will have to wait for their phones. Oh, the poor iPhone customers! Oh, my heart bleeds for you! Man, you have to wait a little bit to get your your phone produced under near-slave conditions and sometimes actually just that in China because they're being oppressed and it's going to take a little bit longer. <laughs> Maybe just don't buy them. <laughs> Aside from saying that customers will experience longer wait times to receive their new products, other iPhone models were not mentioned in the press release. Um, so, basically, just to be super clear, Apple is in bed with the Chinese government. And it's not just in this way, either. It's also in the way that they will literally suppress those VPN apps so that Chinese citizens can't circumvent any sort of Chinese internet censorship. 
and they will literally suppress the entire Western access to the Apple market because those include some naughty apps that might make their iPhone producers more free. And that's why in 2017, uh, Apple removed a bunch of VPN apps from the App Store in China, that being 60 plus, 60 plus VPN apps, including ExpressVPN, uh, StarVPN, um, and a bunch of fucking others, because you can't have these people having a little bit more access to information if you're going to force them to make your products. And 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 just to be super clear here, <laughs> a bunch of these people filed all these resolutions and then fa- found out that, oh, apps must comply with all legal regulations. So the fact is that they, they said, well, this government banned your apps and we're not going to care about the reasons because this government also makes our phones. <laughs> And so this article goes on, it's on TechCrunch to say the App Store purge is hugely impactful because VPNs represent the only way that a China-based individual can bypass state censorship controls to access the internet without restrictions. The Chinese government effectively illegalized VPNs when new rules issued in January of 2017 required them to receive government approval in order to operate. That appears to be why Apple was forced to remove ExpressVPN and others like it, because they told uh, the Chinese government, and by extension Apple, to go fuck themselves. That's, that's the levels on which we lie here, just to be super clear. And th- the reason that the COVID-19 restrictions are super ironic in this regard is, uh, well, the reason... This fire that they're protesting um, was so bad was because of lockdowns that meant their fire hoses couldn't even reach the location and people were locked inside their houses, unable to legally leave. So this country, which Apple relies on for their technology is locking their citizens inside like caged beasts. And when people need to get out of their apartments so that they can flee a fucking fire, and when firefighters need to be able to access that fire, both the barriers that are in the way of people accessing areas as normal and the barriers blocking people from exiting their fucking houses meant that 30 people died. And Apple is responding to this by telling people, go fuck yourself if you want to share files using our service. But don't worry, we'll make it global soon. We'll hamper... We'll hamper all reasonable efforts globally soon. We'll make your devices less useful globally soon, but we're starting where our manufacturing relies on human oppression. How do you like that, y'all? If you own an iPhone, this is what you're contributing to. And I know, like, you know, there, there's blood money on everything, right? I'm not saying that I'm perfect, but what I am saying is that it's super fucking, like, on brand for Apple to be, like, this super woke company when it comes to Twitter, but when it comes to literally anything else, they're silent. And and they didn't have a problem, by the way, with Twitter when it was primarily owned by the Saudi Arabian government through the Sovereign Wealth Fund. They didn't have a problem with Prince Awalid bin Talal al-Saud, they didn't have a problem with him because they don't care about human rights abuses or being woke. That's why they're totally fine with apps like, you know, Absher, which literally helps control women. You know, literally helps control women. You can look this up. And, you know, other Saudi apps like, you know, uh, <laughs> like the ones that literally allow them to report people that they know act as paid snitches for the Saudi government. And that is this one. 
which you literally can just file police reports with. And, and you know, it's, it's not just Saudi Arabia either. It's, it's also in China, where they're literally helping build apps in China to help snitches too. And it's not just Saudi Arabia and China here. We have the iWatch apps for the LAPD, for Dallas, for any police department that wants can get an iWatch app, which does the same thing. Snitch on your neighbors. This is the culture Apple wants. This is the culture they promote. This is the culture that has existed for years that they've done nothing about. Because they don't give a shit about hate speech, minority rights, social justice. They couldn't give a fuck less. They're in it for money. And they will abuse whatever citizens they need to in order to make that happen. They are a fundamentally evil organization. And I just thought I would take this time to remind people that the fact that they said something to Elon doesn't make them super social justice warriors. And that maybe you should still fucking oppose these people as the mega corporate state capitalist multi-billionaires that they are. Because holy shit, do I not want to hear from any social justice cunt who decides that Apple is now the woke brand of phone. It's like the people who suddenly bought a bunch of Nike, um, you know, when, when, when they supported Colin Kaepernick or, you know, started buying more Nike when they dropped Kanye. You don't care. You didn't give a fuck. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Fuck you. Uh, so I just thought I would remind people of this. I thought I would bring it up. And I thought I would leave it up to you. If you want to help the literal Chinese government, if you want to help your local police departments, if you want to help the Saudi Arabian government, if you want to help oppression, if you want to help evil, then feel free to order the new iPhone Pro and Pro Max. Because those pl places that they're being built are killing their own people in the name of COVID lockdowns, and have been for a long time. And this is the model for the coming global tyranny. So, buckle up, because if you think that's bad, there's so many more reasons that are on this channel already, and so many more coming for you to smash the fucking state.